Hi everyone, welcome back to Herky the Cavalier's channel. Today I wanted to address a subject that is very sensitive to a lot of dog owners, especially Cavaliers, and that is the heart health and heart diseases in dogs, especially Cavaliers. So just a disclaimer, I'm not a vet, I'm not a doctor, I'm just dog mother, a Cavalier owner that really likes and loves my dog and I did my own research. So I just want to share this video with you in order for you to be educated as well. But please don't take this video as any advice or anything to be taken for granted. Please make sure to do your own research and consult your vet if ever your dog does have heart disease. So if you didn't know, heart disease is very, very common amongst Cavaliers. When you are about to adopt one, just be wary of that because if you don't know and it catches you by surprise, then it's obviously not something that you want. So the most uh, common type of heart disease that is gonna affect Cavaliers is mitral valve disease, which is also referred to as MVD. And unfortunately, it's the leading cause of death amongst Cavaliers. And what that disease is, unfortunately, is that it affects nearly 50% of all Cavaliers by age five and almost all of them by age 10. Most of them by that time will have mitral valve disease. What is mitral valve disease? It's actually a degenerative heart disease which affects the mitral valve of your dog's heart and the heart actually has four valves and this would be the degeneration of the mitral valve. So the valve in your dog's heart must open and close thousands of times a day in order for the blood to flow properly through the body and it does so so that the blood actually flows in one direction throughout the whole body. So the valve actually allows that uh, the blood flows in one direction only and when that valve opens and the blood can flow and when it closes the blood can't flow backwards. So in the mitral valve, what happens actually is that the valve can't open and close properly, which causes the blood to flow backwards. And eventually when the blood keeps flowing back like that and the valve doesn't work properly, then it's going to lead to congestive heart failure. Sorry, I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because she keeps licking me. Heart diseases in dogs will actually affect almost 10% of all dogs at some point in their life, but it's so much more prominent amongst Cavaliers. I think it's... Uh, Cavaliers are actually 20 times more prone to heart disease than other dogs are. And also in Cavaliers, the onset of the disease is actually much earlier on. And the condition actually worsens much faster amongst Cavaliers. Once diagnosed, it would usually take about one to three years for the dog to become to come to the stage of congestive heart failure, whereas, whereas other dogs would usually take three to five years. But of course, these are just statistics and it can happen faster or slower depending on your dog so don't take these statistics for, for facts it, it really all depends so what's the cause of mitral valve disease it's hereditary so like humans it's something that you're born with there's nothing really that you can do to prevent it unfortunately but there's some things that you can do in order to delay the onset or to manage the disease so the first and foremost important thing that you must do is screen your cavalier for the disease and that means that you should go to your vet appointment every year in order for your vet to diagnose for any heart murmurs and heart murmurs would actually be a good sign for the vet to know if there's actually a potential for mitral valve disease or not and once they're there then they should confirm three to six months later if it's actually a heart murmur and if it is then you can take on the next steps in order to manage the disease. So after mitral valve disease is diagnosed, it will usually lead to congestive heart failure over time and that digression will actually depend on your dog. It's not always the same with every dog. So uh, just make sure that you keep going to the vet for the vet to do extra tests to know if the condition worsens. And if that's the case, then uh, your vet will be able to suggest a method of medical or lifestyle changes for your dog in order to help manage the disease and the heart failure. So once your dog approaches uh, congestive heart failure, the symptoms that you can look out for is uh, restlessness. Um, your dog can pant really excessively when they exercise, intolerance to exercise, a distended abdomen. You can also see weight loss and a lot of fatigue and even fainting in some cases. So just be very aware of your dog's uh, behavior and look out for anything that's out of the ordinary. And as soon as you see something that's not normal, you should go and consult the help of a vet. So what you can do in order to treat the disease, as I mentioned, it's degenerative 
hereditary disease, so there's not much you can do. Of course, there's surgery that's possible, but that is usually considered unrealistic for dogs since uh, there's a lot of possible consequences, it's very pricey, and there's also not a guarantee that it would work. So your best way would be to either change the diet in order for the disease to um, degenerate slower. Get your dog on medication in order to manage the symptoms. So examples of some supplements and vitamins that you can give your dog is fish oils, um, coenzyme Q10, vitamin C, vitamin E, and uh, there's also this other supplement called Anti-Ox Ultra 5000. As for diet, just like humans when you have heart disease, then you could switch your dog to a heart diet, which is low in fat, low in salt, uh, high in fiber, just a, an overall healthier diet. You can switch and add some more fresh vegetables to your dog's diet. I know some people are also uh, very supportive of the raw diet. I won't get into too much details because I haven't done enough research on the raw diet in order to talk to you about it. It's something we're considering with Herky, but once I get all the information and I have started it with her, then I can talk about it in more detail with you. And again, as I mentioned, there is no cure. And since it's a genetic disease, what you can do is actually do your research about your dog's parents and grandparents' background. And that's actually the responsibility of the breeder to make sure that they don't breed dogs that have the disease. So responsible breeders will actually follow the MVD breeding protocol. And what you want usually is that the parents and the grandparents of your dog to be free of that disease and you make sure that uh, it's cleared from the vet. And again, what you can do is prevention. Just do your research, make sure that you're very educated and that you research on your dog's uh, background also just to make sure that they're free of any disease. And what you can do is also change the diet, brush your dog's teeth because health starts at the gums. Just like humans, if they have healthy gums then there won't be any bacteria and plaque that can go into the bloodstream and cause heart disease. You can also exercise a healthy heart so moderate exercise is always recommended. Oh and make sure you go to your annual vet appointment. Change up the diet for a healthier diet and of course enjoy the time you have with your pup because you never know what can happen and <laughs> just be mindful of everything. So I hope this video was helpful for you and please let me know if you have any questions. Again, I'm not a vet, I'm just doing my own research and I hope this helps you too. So until then, we'll see you next time. Bye! From Vet Solutions, we got this at Herpes Vet. And this is an aloe and oatmeal shampoo, so it's going to be gentle enough on the skin for you to be able to shampoo.